Hi YouTubers, welcome to Homebrew Wednesday. This is me, Mark, from Hover Brewery. Well, I've run out of beer. I know, unbelievable, but I don't drink a lot. I always do small batches, so today's a brew day for another batch, and it's my old favourite, the Ginger Fire. This is typical, someone's just got the lawnmower out as I started my video. Hopefully, you can't hear it too loud. So a Ginger Fire, to remind you what the recipe is, uh, it's basically a pale ale with ginger, uh, it's ginger root boiled up, uh, chilli and uh, I did put some lemon in but I don't think it adds anything to it so I've taken that out, you know, other beers years ago used to use lemongrass which has fallen out of favour I think but anyway, no lemon. But I was given some rhubarb and I fancy putting some rhubarb in a beer so uh, I've just knocked up my Ginger Fire version 2 pot brew. I called it Fire and Ice, but it should be Sour and Ice or Sour and Fire. As in, might get a bit of sourness off the ginger, off the rhubarb, not quite sure. Um, uh, Steve Molson will tell us all about rhubarb. Go and look for his channel. He brews and does all sorts of things with rhubarb. Uh, yeah, and then the, the fire comes from the ginger and the chilli. So basically, it's going to be. Um, Two kilograms of pale malt. Uh, it says Marasotta, but I've actually just got some standard pale malt from a local brewery shop because I've run out of a uh, 25 kilogram bag. Right, um, so it's two kilograms of gin, uh, ginger, two kilograms of the pale malt, and then uh, 300 grams of uh, I put caramel or crystal malt um, 30 SRM. So it's not dark, just give it a bit more colour to it. Um, ginger root is going to be 1.5 kilograms. It's a lot for this batch. I know I could probably half that. I scaled it for 23 litres. I'm going to brew 15. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. It might be too much. But I've got a ginger to use up. I have to get rid of it. It's been in the freezer for, well, forever a day. Uh, bittering with Magnum. And then it's a bit of Cascade, Citra, the chilies, which I chop up fine. And I boil them separately normally. Uh, and then. At the end, flame out, it's going to be some Cascade and Citra um, USO5 yeast. Um, once it's fermented out, maybe three days out into fermentation, I'm going to throw in all my ginger. Right, hold on, I'll show it you. He says, so all the hops fall out the fridge, freezer. So, I need to weigh it. I've got no idea how much is here. It's all frozen. But that, my friends, is it too much? Will they make it sour? I don't know. I don't know what to do. Just throw it in. I might boil it up for 15 minutes to break down some of the the cells and just to release its goodness. Right, hold on. Well, rehearse this. Oh gosh! This is the ginger. I say it feels very heavy. Maybe I'll only use half of that. The chilies are in the house. Yeah, chilies are in the house. I should have brewed last weekend. So they're a week old, but they'll be right. Uh, and I'm going to throw the whole lot in. Uh, there's only three or four. Uh, and I'm going to use two. Right, well, that's the waffle intro. And um, yeah, starting with a big pot today. I hope you can see that uh, camera, but it's a big pot. Um, that's going to be for uh, mashing in. Um, I'd use that and then the small pot for the boil because it's on the induction plate, small batch again. Um, and that's for today's brew, so we should be all right. Uh, I'll do the usual waffle, filmy bit, you know, music over the top, just so I don't bore you. I really must give you some reviews of my beers because people have asked for that in the comments. Um, I might do that as an additional br uh, video later in the week. Right, let's get on with it.
these are the chairs I'm going to use. So, uh, Asda or Walmart in the US and I don't know, whatever else you've got. So yeah, 17th of May. Ah, best of all two days ago. The fine, it's best before. So, do I use all of them? There's four in there. I normally use two on a 23 litre batch. So I might, might just use two of the big ones. Or should I use all of them? Whoa. Let's use all of them. So, literally, all you do, get rid of the stalk at the end and just chop them up. Literally, just chop them up quite fine like this. She got a bit of knife, shouldn't it? Um, so, you've got the seeds, you've got everything in there. I don't bother getting rid of that. It's going to go in the boil, so I don't even bother washing them. Um, if they went into the fermenter, I would wash them. So, I'll just leave the bit in the end because, like, not a fucking. Uh, sorry, can't swear. Oops, oh bollocks, never mind. I'm not monetized. Who gives a spoof, whatever? I don't, yeah. Right, so, chop these up. Go. Been in the house and uh, this is the ginger but it's been here probably 12 months actually I've just um, it's been frozen it's gonna be interesting to chop up there's one kilogram here so I normally use 1.5 kilograms per 23 litre batch this will be a 14 litre batch with one kilogram in so this could be more gingery I have experimented with a 23 litre batch um, with three kilograms of ginger. You can't tell the difference between three and 1.7 that I normally use, or one point, I think I used 1.5 last time. So what I'm gonna do, this is the root ginger, if you've not seen it before. I've not washed it, it's been in the freezer, it's pretty defrosted a few times when the freezer goes, uh, goes oh, frost free. So what I'm going to do is chop all this up, throw it in the pot, right, okay. Here we go. I'll cut to the end. One thing I find is when it's frozen, it's, it's meant to break down the cells. Whether that's right, I don't know. And uh, But when it is frozen, uh, you can get some quite thin slices. Now this is the worst piece of ginger after the whole pack. So, yeah, look. Okay, so I threw it all in. And this is another spoon. You can see the lumps of ginger. It's uh, still frozen, that one. Right, so we've got lumps of ginger. Um, yep. Still frozen, so it's stuck together when I put it in the water. But basically, it's, it's chopped up pretty fine. Right? So, ginger and chilli, it's one of the middle herbs, right stuck together, look at that, let's get that apart, it's still partly frozen, so yeah, be right, the reason I cut it thin is to give it a larger surface area so you get the ginger out of the root, it's chilli on my hand, watch it rub my eye in a minute and start screaming, right, what we need to do now is put this on the uh, the boil, um, or get a boil on, so induction plate, or in the past I've done it in the house, on the gas. It doesn't really matter how you do it, but we need to boil it for 15, maybe 30 minutes. Oh, well, it's just come up to a boil. Just help with the lid on. I wish this was smelly vision, smelly tube, is that a thing? To reduce the power down on the um, induction plate. 
So what we do now, we'll boil it for between 15 and 30 minutes. Um, it's random. It just is random, just boil it till you think you're done. So uh, yeah, just gotta leave it now. All I can smell is ginger, it's awesome. So, put the top back on. I can actually reduce the power a little bit. I can hear it boiling. Ho ho! Yeah, right. We'll simmer that now. And uh, just wait for the mash tun to, uh, to finish. Um, not sure the camera's going to focus, my eyes aren't. So we need some magnum, 7 grams of magnum at the start of the boil. That's going to be uh, for bittering. And then 15 minutes from the end, a bit of cascade, a bit of citra, and then uh, it says chilies, but I've already put them in. It's just the way it orders it. Uh, yep, Irish moss or protoflock, proto and then at the bottom, at flame out or when I chill it down to 80 degrees, we'll have 20 of citra and 5 of cascade. So you should see those coming up on the video. Um, this uh, ginger, by the way, is boiling away very nicely. Um, certainly smelly vision here. I've turned the fan off. But, uh, whoa, it's brilliant. Now, I've got to say, what I do sometimes, and I've done in the past, is I will I, I, I get the liquor out of here, pour it in the, in the wort, uh, just before the boil, um, and then, whilst the boil's on, I let the I let the garlic, garlic <laughs> the ginger cool down, and I uh, often bag that up and then throw it in at the boil kettle for a second hit. So I'll probably do that, that again today. Um, I have a few issues with my bags um, where they've actually burnt because they've been on the gas in the past and to get some more actually. My own fault. So yeah, this is uh, going well. Um, I've added an extra 15 or 20 minutes to the timer, so uh, so we've got, well I'll call it 17 minutes to go, and then um, we can combine the whole lot. I'll just check the temperature on the mash tun, uh, mash tun's just sat over here, I've got to check the temperature on that because it might be dropping a lot, if it is we'll just swap out uh, the two pots just so I can heat up the mash tun. Right, back think when the mash is over. The mash is now over. I did a uh, iodine test, which I've never done before, and uh, there was a little bit of grain in a little few little flecks. So we'll distort it; it'll be darker. But it came out quite well, actually. I was quite, you know, quite happy with that. So now I'm going to sparge. Fortunately, both my pots are full. So what I'm going to have to do is drain the oh, drain the older uh, grains here. Should be interesting. So let's stick that on there. So we're going to drain it now. But we need to sparge. I normally heat me water up in another tub. Another kettle corn and tub pots. So um, I'm a bit screwed, aren't I? What I'm, trying, what I'm attempt to do is pour it into this large jug, which is a two liter. And then I can use this as a sparge water. Ah, thanks, man. It's not exactly gonna. Oh, for God's sake. I've only got a smaller one. The answer is no, I've not. So I'm gonna try and pour this into there. And you're not gonna laugh like mad at me now, aren't you? And then I'll use that as sparge. I've got, to, I've got a sparge with 10 litres, which is like a lot. Seems a lot anyway. Mm -hmm. 
So another eight litres of water now. I won't film that. Eight litres of water and we'll come back. scooping off some of the um, protein stuff off the top so I'll just get rid of that and then we can start whoa now I've got to watch out here because I get very close to boil over um, so yeah not perfect but we're getting rid of this it's all right I'm just gonna turn the radio down hopefully it won't boil over to me back Right, don't want to get YouTube uh, give me a strike. So look, quite a lot of crap out there. You know, it's like there was a comment from a troll. I mean, I mean, it's troll. It's just like got myself a YouTube account, no details, nothing, absolutely just like you know a random name. Oh, scoop this off. It was clearly a cut and paste from a, uh, a book or another website or something like that. Oh, anyway, I sometimes scoop this off, sometimes don't, but today, yep, yeah, I've scooped it off. It'll probably make no difference, but hey, but knowing it boils off, I think, it disappears. So there's not a lot left now. So it's looking quite clear. It is murky, I, you know, I, I, I don't run it to the green, br br green bed on the mash tun, otherwise, it would be very clear. It's one of the disadvantages of using a single pot. So look, we're on the boil now. So we're ready for our first uh, edition of 60 minutes. Now, this is only um, a, a small edition. Don't boil over, come on. Uh, so the first edition at 60 is the Magnum, seven grams. And this is just purely for bittering, okay? And I'll tell you what I'm going to do today. I just about nearly forgot them. This is the, uh, the hot keg hopper. I'm actually going to use this today. I've thrown it in once already. Ow! Splash myself with that water. Whoa! It's a bit of a crazy thing. This might not work. Um, mm, it's not going to work because it's on the bottom and causing the boil. Right, so we need to suspend it. And then I'm going to be a bit knackered trying to add more hops on it. I don't really want to throw all the hops in the bottom. Mm, because it makes the right mess. If I throw my hop <laughs> it goes crazy to put that in. I don't really want to throw my hop spider in because it hits the bottom and makes it do that as well. Right, anyway, let's try it. We can add it. Ow! We can remove it anyway, right? So, drain that off. Ow, 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 ow. It's freaking up. Right, I'm going to add these seven grams of magnum to said red hot keg hopper. Ow, 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 ow. It's hot. Right, you can't see this, but honestly, they've gone in. Oh, sorry. All right, let's put the top back on. And we're going to put that in there. Now, it'd be nice if I could uh, suspend it. Ah, oh, right, hold on. So, where the pot is, right above, is the extractor fan up here. I might be able to suspend this twine up here somewhere using one of these cheap Wilco clamps. Oh, look at that! Fantastic! Whee! That'll do! Right, first edition in. Better start a timer, I've got 45 minutes. Um, get rid of Fitbit. Uh, timer, 45 minutes before the next one. So, uh, 
45 is what is it next one is at 15 so uh right I'll, I'll whack this up a bit get a boil on come back for second edition 15 minutes to go now now you can see i've changed the hop spider because this idea was really good except it's got a solid base so uh, so whilst it may have worked uh you know the hop from the bottom and, and it's a bit finer this than that one uh, i just felt that this other hop spider which is it's far too big would actually be better so um i've strung it up just like before okay look because oh, i've got two on there just to make sure one falls off the other one as a security so it's boiling away uh, this one's got a, a mesh at the bottom so let's add the two 15 minute additions so that's uh, five grams of citra going in and then there's um, five grams of cascade in fact this is the citra that other was cascade hey, hey. okay that's it uh, the next addition will be in five minutes and that's going to be some uh, some of the old protoflock um, capsules, granules even that I use. Uh, they were out of date last year, but I'm sure they're fine. Don't need much to go off. So then after that will be the flame out addition, and that's it for the hoppages. So uh, back in, well, back at flame out. Brew day over, it's at uh, half six, so it's been a quite a long brew day actually. Um, put the wort in the boil copper, boil pot, put it in the sink, it's in cold water, uh, changed water three times, stuck a lot of these in there, um, had some dinner, came back, down to 26, quick stir, 25, 24, something like that. So I'm in the brew shed now, I've just poured half into the fermenter quite a lot of protein floating around so I'm trying to avoid putting that in so I'll get a clearer beer. But other than that it's, it's been really good so um, as usual the good, the bad and the ugly. Uh, the good, the good is that I'm actually brewing one of my favourite beers. I don't drink enough of it. It's always bottled so I'm going to keg it this time and then I can drink it. Uh, it's the good. Um, the bad, a um, couple of mistakes by me but you know nothing nothing serious uh, and there was nothing ugly. Um, I would like to invest in a cooling method. I've got the old copper coil that I made but I'm on a water meter. It's got to be something else I can do to chill that down. If you remember three years ago I think it was I tried my flash chiller. Uh, for those who don't know flash chiller it's a, a mechanical box thing. Uh, it's like a built-in fridge so it, or a freezer. It creates like an ice um, bath, let's call it, and inside it's got a coil. So you put normally your, your lager will go through your the coil, so it comes out freezing cold. Um, I did try that, and uh, years ago it wasn't successful. But I'm sure there's something along those lines. Maybe use of that with a plate chiller. I don't know. I don't want to use all the water. Um, oh, they put a flash chiller on. To be honest. That's probably use 20p electric and I'd probably only use 20p water. That's for something for the future though. So good, bad and ugly, you know, nothing really bad and all good because I'm here. Okay, well, nothing else to say so I'll wrap it up. This is Mark from Hover Dog Brewery signing off and as always, stay thirsty. Hi YouTubers, a bit of a supplemental video. I'm going to add the rhubarb and the ginger that you saw early on, I drained off and I put in the freezer. So I'm going to put all that in a bag into the beer. So it'll be more gingery and a bit of rhubarb. In. Now, oh, camera, I'm not quite sure which uh, rhubarb to put in, so let me just show you what I'm doing now. So I've got a bit of rhubarb, it's at half it. I'm just putting a really small amount of water and because uh, it was frozen I'm just basically uh, you can see it's it's not a lot of water more water's coming out of the rhubarb actually oh god freaking nearly dropped the damn thing right that's trying to hold the camera and film and do stuff and it doesn't work right so this is looking good I should have really watched Steve Molson's video it would have helped because he's done 
lots of rhubarb. So, um, I can smell the rhubarb, but it's really quite strong. So what I should do, I will, will do is, apart from just like throw it on the hob there, I think this should be all right now. The smell is amazing. Now it is gonna break up as rhubarb does. The light's flickering, isn't it? Okay, I can see it's starting to break up, so I'll turn the heat off now. I'm gonna let it cool down, put it in probably a brew in a bag, bag, <laughs> and throw it in with the ginger. Let's go and put it, uh, let's go to the shed and do it. Back from the microwave, so this is quite semi uh, defrosted. Um, I've had the pan in the freezer all places and it's cooled down quite well actually. You can see, well I hope you can see on camera it's starting to break up. So rather than put that in a muslin bag or just throw it in the bottom of the fermenter, which uh, I've got it out of the fridge, I normally just throw it in the bottom and then there's loads of, of trouble at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is uh, put it in me cake thing. So this will be fun. Uh, clearly there's some fluid in there, some liquid, so that'll just go in. Um, I think I might put the ginger in first and then I can pour this over the top now. I don't think I'll get all this ginger in here. Uh, so let's have a go. You can have a laugh at me I'm trying to get it in. Um, I'll sanitise this first, hold on. Right, it's dripping with star Sam. Let's uh, just shove this in here. It's a bit of a laugh. Don't know how much I'll get in here. I'll just put it in. Pretty sure I didn't put all the ginger in last time. It's quite good it's still half frozen. It just sort of goes in him. Oh, you can see him. No, that's not going to go in, is it? Let's get some of the bits up to there. So, when we're dripping, we're getting some gingery goodness, I want to keep that. So, so you can have a laugh again. I'm going to pour, I need to pour the, the fluid off this into the beer and then put the rest of it in there. Okay. Now it might not be fully, fully up to uh, a usual standard. But I might get a bit of, uh, let's pour it against the side. I can smell the ginger, it's blooming awesome. Okay. We need lost the we need lost some rhubarb there. So this will now go in here. That's a better idea, isn't it? Now there's no reason why I can't put that in there has been sanitised, this has already been boiled. The, um, I didn't re-boil the ginger. So this, please don't go in the beer. Don't fancy trying to fish it out. Oh, keg it. I've no idea what this is going to be like, by the way. It may come out complete pants. So just to recap, I've, uh, I've, I've I boiled or simmered the uh, the rhubarb for a short period of time, just to basically uh, defrost it and to get it on its way. So, right, that's all the rhubarb in. Let's have a taste. Oh god, it's sour. Oh gosh. Ah. Oh, I love rhubarb, but no, need some sugar. So I'm glad I didn't put any more in. Oh, gee, that is really, really. Sour. Of course it is, you fool. It's freaking rhubarb, isn't it? Rhubarb, rhubarb, rhubarb. Right. There's a lot of ginger there. So let's call that quits. Let's just pour in the. Uh... Oh, a bit closer, isn't it? Let's pour a bit of this fluid in. It's a gingery goodness. You would not believe how this, this ginger smells. Well, you would, it was ginger. Uh, it's 
smells beautiful. Okay, so put the cap on. Let's get you a bit closer. So all, you can see the, uh, the beer has, I've just kicked up all the yeast from the bottom. I was dead clever that mark. It, uh, it was going quite clear. So uh, we're just gonna drop this in. It just about fits look. So, uh, oh, it's in there. What we've got to do now, of course, is uh, dry hop. Um, so I need to get some hops out of the freezer. So the recipe calls for 50 grams of citra. That is a lot. It smells awesome, so I'm gonna just have a look what 50 grams really looks like. No, that even 30 already is, is a lot. So let's reduce this to 30 grams. Did I say kilograms or grams? Um, let's just put, screw it, 25 grams. Yes, I'm being a tight wood. Citra's expensive. There's a lot in here. That bloody neighbour. It's going to right bloody mess anyway and decide, oh, I'm going to cut it now. Bloody twat. Twat. I didn't say that word, did I? Right, 24.97, okay. So that's good. Okay. And I'm moving it around. 24 point. It can't work it out because I'm moving around. 24.97. Now I don't want to just throw this in the bottom because it'll be making a mess. Oh, I do love the smell of this. So I'm going to use the old uh, tea strainer again. Um, I think. Or oh, do I use my hot bag? This thing doesn't have a lot of room to let the goodness of the alpha acids out. So I'll tell you what, let's throw it in. Let's throw it in this poppy bag. Yeah, 25 grams of citra. So I'm going to uh, loosely tie the top. That should do it. Not a lot of weight to it. All you people out there, get some camera action, mate. And uh, we'll just throw it in. Um, I'll probably come back tomorrow. I might just wag, wag it around a bit. Come on, get in there, drop to the bottom or something. Uh, let's put it at the back, then it won't interfere with the tap when I come to uh... Right, she's in. There we go, so let's get it sealed up and back in the fermentation fridge. So I put the blow off valve in some star sun and put the uh, little temperature probe, which feels a bit sticky actually. So I'll stick that behind my little piece of tape and a piece of polystyrene. Okay, and uh, shut the door. So that's the final part of, of this brew day. Uh, I know I sort of stopped and said it's the end, but hey. And dry hops. I don't really show that because what's the point? Of always looks the same. Um, 25 grams of citra. Uh, I didn't measure the rhubarb, it was just half of what I had. I think that's going to be enough for a small batch. Uh, and of course, uh, some of the ginger. There's some left here. It's a shame to throw it away, but I think it's just going to go in the well, the food recycling tub. Oh, that amazing smell. And that should do us. Well, I've already signed off, so I'm not going to sign off again. Uh, I'll hopefully give this a taste test. Uh, I'll try and do it on camera. I, I forget a lot of time. And like, if you look at the, the beer, the Sriracha Ace One, gone. I've got four bottles left, which is for giving away to somebody. Um, and the other beer I had on, that's gone as well, the Aponius. It's Aponius Union, but I changed it, so I, I just sort of called it Aponius, that's gone as well. Uh, I have got an IPA in there which I did put on. I know I, did, I, know I hadn't got any beer to drink, so I hadn't. It was carving up, and that is literally a cheap tin from Wilco. It was best before the end of 2017. So I just had the cam. I, I ditched the uh, the yeast, used USL5 yeast, and, uh, 
and it came out at 3.7 which is pretty low really I was a little bit disappointed um, I did hop it quite a lot so that I did try as well it's pretty good it's holding pressure at 20 psi at the moment it's been like that for several days hasn't dropped down so I think should now probably drop the gas and uh, get ready for serving um, big good video just to knock you know knock that up and show you how that is uh, it was tasting very bitter and it's normally pale is their IPA and it was quite brown which I take it just the age of the uh, extract right well I'll wind it up here guys and girls brewers and brewsters and non brewers and we'll come back with a taste test but for now this is Mark from Hobdog signing off enjoy yourselves <laughs>